I'm a law professor. I work in artist rights and access to knowledge and culture. And I've had the, the idea for many years that you're not allowed to do that. Like we're always told that we have to pick a team. Like, do you care about creators or do you care about users? And of course, it's a false dichotomy, right? And it's always been obvious to me. Um, my grandmother growing up was a commercial artist. And so I was inculcated in moral rights issues from a very young age. I remember being about four or five years old and sitting under her illustrating table. And it's still like there's still a particular kind of illustrator's inks that can just transport me through space and time. And I'm, I'm there under that desk again. And she would just make the most extraordinary drawings. And um, what do you know about art when you're five years old? Like, you know, you write your name on that stuff. Um, and I would always say, Nana, why haven't you written your name on this? And uh, she would say, I'm not allowed to write my name on it. And she never got royalties and she never got recognition. And in my house as well, there really weren't any books, but I was always starving for something to read. So uh, libraries were incredibly important to me. And authors and books um, showed me alternative ways that the world could be and gave me something to aim for. So always very clear to me that, yes, you can care about both artist rights and access to knowledge and culture. I'm a professor at Melbourne Law School where I have spent, gosh, now, how long is it? Uh, close to 20 years working on issues around uh, that and technology regulation and thinking about how do we do a better job of achieving copyright's fundamental aims, which are to recognize and reward creative workers and to maximize access to knowledge and culture. And uh, what I want and what my interest is here is to do a better job of achieving both of those things and with less collateral damage than current than current approaches. Ebooks are a really complicated and vexed issue. Um, we've got these, these are choke pointed markets. Um, you can see I've written this book with Cory Doctorow called Choke Point Capitalism, where we show that while competition is supposed to be fundamental to capitalism, you've got these big corporations who have systematic, systematically set out to eliminate it. Um, that's what we, we see with um, the, the big record labels who use like accumulate vast reservoirs of copyrights and use that to, um, to, to, to shape the future of music markets to benefit their investors rather than the, the artists that are signed up to them. We see it with Amazon and the way that it controls the markets for eBooks, physical books and audio books. Um, we see it with um, in, in Hollywood with the, the Writers Guild, the way that the, the even the Hollywood talent agencies were set up. Um, and it's the same playbook happening throughout the creative industries. And we're seeing it in ebooks um, uh, all, all, in, in a whole bunch of different ways. We have um, choke points, which is where, you know, the, the market has been sort of squeezed into this hourglass shape where you've got, you know, audiences at one end, creators at the other, and then these predatory corporations squatting at the neck. Um, in in the context of ebooks, we've got those those predatory corporations that that control the choke points. They can they can be platforms uh, like Amazon or like the, um, the 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 platforms that aggregate ebooks into libraries. Um, they might be publishers themselves. When we've got these really powerful publishers, a few in the trade book industry and a couple as well in an academic and educational publishing, and they're able to set terms and to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. But they're doing so not in ways that try and achieve either of those missions. They're not doing that to do a better job of paying authors, and they're not doing that to do a better job of maximizing access to knowledge and culture. They're doing it to, to line the pockets of their investors. And so um, all the work that I've been doing, and we've done lots of research with the eLending Project, which is eLendingProject.org, gathering empirical research around how eBooks are actually being priced and licensed, how long it takes them to be made available to libraries, um, and, and how libraries actually make the decisions about which eBooks to purchase and how licensing and pricing affects them in doing so. All of that research and our discussions with publishers, um, all these chats with librarians, the discussions with authors, it all tells us that there's a lot of common interest here, all right? And I think that we shouldn't be thinking about it as creators versus users or even publishers versus libraries, aggregators versus libraries. I think we should be thinking about it in terms of class. Who are the class allies here and what do they want? What are their interests? We've got these big businesses here who are getting in the way and who are uh, shaking down everybody else for far more than what's a fair share of value. 
And we've got people who care about books and knowledge and making the world better, which overwhelmingly is book people. Um, we've got lots of common interest, a lot of common ground, and it's time to really start working together, forming new coalitions that recognize that common ground and taking back some of that value from those predatory corporations.